Hey, this is David Perdue from MyNamps.com and the Novice to Advanced Marketing System. And as you can see, I'm not in my normal abode here. I'm on the road. I am in uh, in Florida, Central Florida. I have uh, been down here a couple of weeks um, visiting my family. Uh, many of you have asked about my father who had a couple of hips replaced in the last two, two months, two and a half months. And he's doing very well. So I really appreciate you asking and uh, being concerned and, and posting on Facebook about it and all of that. And your prayers help because a couple of days he wasn't doing so well. So I really do appreciate that. Thank you. So uh, today we have one of um, my favorite people, somebody who, and he would be my favorite person oh. even if he was if he was, he was an awful person, oh. but he's not, because he... Um, has been to every NAMS workshop <laughs> that we have done. Uh, Gary came to the first one and has continued to come to all 12 workshops and he's been incredibly involved in the workshop, a great supporter. We've had him teaching business models. He and I taught that together, which I loved the experience of doing that. He, he, I, I kind of stood in the back of the room and just said what he says <laughs> because he's so good at that. And Gary also has kind of a... Um, the same type background that I do, except his is on steroids, mine was on sedatives. Um, he is a project management expert, and he really is a guy who understands task and how to drive to completing the vision through your task. I'm really good at big picture stuff, and Gary is really good at getting the big picture done. So um, that's one of the reasons I love talking to Gary, and I always picking his brain about how to get things done. Well, so um, Gary was in our 90-day challenge, and Gary came into the 90-day challenge with a new product that he had purchased and taken over a new business. And he's going to talk about that today as well, but mostly what he's going to talk about today is how to take tasks, how to manage tasks, and be productive and, and accomplish things. So Gary, I'm really glad you're here. I'm going to let you talk about it and take it over and show people how we uh, are, what we're going to move forward and what they're going to learn. Well, David, thank you very much, and uh, I appreciate uh, the the kind words. I guess I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned. Even though I didn't like the guy, at least I like him because he came to the 12 man. <laughs> I think the good news is... That is not what I said. I, okay, I, I guess I just... Um, the good news is hopefully I'm a likable guy. <laughs> You're an incredibly likable guy. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, short story is I got a whole bunch of free stuff from Xfinity because I was so nice to the repair guy that was on the line. And when I went back into the store, the people said, well... How'd you get that credit? And I had just been talking to them for the last half hour. And I, well, because I'm nice. It, yeah, that's it. It, it works. It, it does goes work. a long ways, doesn't it? <laughs> so um, the the great thing about us being able to have a chance to get together today is um, if you think about where we are in the year, um, it, we're kind of all coming up on the end of 2014. And frankly, I'm I'm a little scared out of my you know, pajamas, mm -hmm. um, because it, it went so fast. It did. It was like, wow, it's already December. Um, and so I, we've got to be ready. Where are we at towards the end of this year, and where do we need to go? And all that is about how we are managing our time. And I, and I, and I said it, if somebody had caught the, um, uh, the little trailer, is there is one thing that equalizes the, everybody in the world, and because nobody can get around it, is so far we've only figured out how there are 24 hours in a day. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, my, my approach sometimes, depending on how big the project is and some of the, some of the things uh, that I work on, is you know, I work on a pretty simple process. You know, I'm 12 on and 12 on. Uh, sometimes, uh, yeah, not 12 on, 12 off. I'm, you know, I can put in. The I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the idea is that if every moment or every opportunity we have to be more productive with our time, um, that's a benefit to us. Mm -hmm. um, imagine, and, and I learned this lesson. I, I, I'm still in the corporate world. I, you know, I, I have a, you know, I have a very good. Um, uh, work environment in what I do and it really does help me stay engaged and I learned this lesson when I first moved to the Atlanta area is uh, I was working with somebody and his house was like five minutes from the office mm -hmm. my house at that time was an hour from the office mm -hmm. and his point is hey I get two hours extra every day and that's when I really started thinking about you know you know, we all have the same amount of time it's what we do with it and um, and that's what makes the difference. Uh, imagine two extra hours with your kids, 
two extra hours doing the things you like, two mm -hmm. extra hours growing your business. Mm -hmm. um, those are all important things. And that's that's what we'll talk about today. Okay, good. Cool. So um, you have, I think, a, a presentation that you want to walk through showing us the steps that you have in place. So Yeah, and, and really all we want to do, and I should be able to, there we go, share the screen. Um, the key thing here is um, I want to be able to clear all the junk off the screen for you. There you go. Um, okay, this is a little title screen. I don't know how many folks, when you, if you if you get on a presentation or you're you're attending a webinar, and isn't the title screen like nice and clean? It's mm -hmm. got like a few words on it because you're trying to. But I I picked this one because. This is about what we go through every day, right? I mean, this is all good information. This is all here, but boy, there's a lot of stuff in front of us. And managing what we do with these three simple steps is going to make the difference to help, one, increase productivity. You can see that out there somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, it's me here talking and, and David, and we're going to have this conversational uh, type thing. It's not a, just a straight presentation, but there are and there is a better way. Um, so let's kind of get a little feel for who is, who I am, some of my background. And um, David alluded to this a little bit. Um, first of all, and I, I said this uh, earlier in the, in, the, in the trailer for this session is, um, you know, I have really picked up the, the, the title of Overwhelm Escape Artist. And it's in, it's in relation to some of the things that David said in terms of how I do things I do and the work I do and the people I work with is really helping them. Um, but the reality is I get overwhelmed too. Um, it's not, I can't, I haven't quite found anybody yet that is an overwhelm as elimination artist. Um, I guess I haven't personally met Gandhi, um, but there are, you know, there are folks out there that get close to it. Um, but the average people, I think, like me, um, really have to be able to deal with overwhelm when it hits us. And that's why I'm an escape artist, not necessarily you know the prevention artist, although escaping it is a lot of prevention. But my background is in project management, as David said, and really helping to coach not only within pretty large corporate environments, um, but the, the more, well, practically the more fun, uh, depending on who's listening to this right now, um, mm -hmm. is working with uh, entrepreneurs and, and small business folks because they, they leverage what they see here um, so much better and mm -hmm. being able to make a big difference. So let's let's jump right into. I want to I want to say something first before you jump on. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned Gandhi and yeah. about how you know we think of Gandhi as a simplicity example, right? In the, uh, but in the movie, one of my favorite lines from the movie, the Gan uh, Gandhi was when he was talking to all of the prime ministers and everything. He said, "You know, it keeps a lot. It takes a lot of um, uh, people spend a lot of money to keep me in poverty, <laughs> because that's I mean." Even that state was a planned state that he was executing, right? Yeah. And so it was his vision, and other people were executing his vision, and it wasn't as simple as we thought it was going to be. That's what you're talking about here is that we all have a, a vision, and uh, that overwhelm escape artist piece of it is really being able to hone in on it and focus on it and not get distracted by anything else. So yeah. to me, that's, that's what's so valuable about this. Jump right in. Yeah, no, and great, and and well, I get, the other reason I give sometimes why I use that uh, that title is um, project management can be a little boring, and it really has not served me well in dinner parties. Right. Um, to you know, oh, I'm a project manager, so uh, it has helped if I can lead off with overwhelm escape artist. But again, I today is really about let's go through these three steps here um, because it really is that simple. Now, I, have you uh, have people found the six-step process. Um, we know of many 12-step processes that mm -hmm. help us with other things, right? Um, I have really found over time that if I can do something and if I can break a concept down to three areas, a process down to three major steps, three is my magic number. Mm -hmm. And that's why this appealed to me so well. Now, there's, there's details behind it. It could be more, but it really breaks down to be real clear and list out your specific actions. And we're going to go through each of these uh, individually here. But uh, put a specific time to that, and that'll be a cue, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And then do that action next. 
um, first, do one at a time. There's a sequence. Um, and I don't have a particular slide on it, but this is a great time to talk about, um, in my view, there is no such thing as multitasking. I'm um, with you. Uh, our bodies, yeah, our bodies work to where, you know, um, biologically we can breathe and chew gum and walk at the same time, but that's not the same as focusing attention on doing things. And my my view is that there is no multitasking. There's just sharing uh, limited focus on things at the same time. Yeah, so, you know, breathing and drinking water at the same time is called drowning. There you go. There you go. And so even if you can do two things at once does not mean you should do two things That's at right. once. That's right. Yes. <laughs> or if you think you can do two things. So um, here's some things to think about. And, you know, and again, there's a lot on the slide. And I'm, I, there is, a for a purpose, a very small number of slides with a lot of information because um, I'm, I don't want to flip around a bunch. Let's just talk a little bit about what's it mean when you put your list down. So um, create a list uh, by a show of hands, and I can see everybody's hand out there, um, by a show of hands, how many people use some sort of list to check off what they need to do? I, you know, I, I do. Um, uh, it's how you use that list that matters. Yeah, David does. Great, great. Um, so if you think about, like, let's look at some of these captions here, like free your mind, write things down. That's made a big difference for me. Uh, I got, I got, you know, dozens of different things going on. It's, it, it applies directly to that aspect of overwhelm. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine if I tried to keep track of all those things that I have going on. Um, and if you write it down, you know, the other magic thing that happens for another topic at another time is you can write it down and delegate it and outsource it. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's in your head, it's a little tougher to do that. Um, and wherever I can, I like to just kind of, in the, in the term there, live by paint by the numbers. Um, um, in the nature of what I do in terms of project management and process improvement and things like that, um, I template the heck out of the process of the mm -hmm. things that I do. Uh, because that uh, matters in terms of speed. Well, your action list um, can work that way too in terms of it's not necessarily just an action list for um, today's actions. So there's several different ways, and we'll talk about how to utilize lists in different ways. Um, but think about if you, um, uh, think about to any of the courses, even David, of courses that you may have, um, where you have a six-step process, mm -hmm. right? The six, the six steps of, uh, of advancing big ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's a, that's a, you know, a, a product and an and a information product that you have. Anything that has a automatically has a number to it, well, you can sequence it in this same method. Mm -hmm. It may be how you manage your day, but it's also how you could manage specific projects or specific tasks that you're doing. You know, and an e you bring that one up, the six steps to implementing big ideas is something I use to drive all of our trainings with because it is the six major category areas that we work with. But even, uh, even when we're doing that, the three steps that you're talking about here fit with every item in those that apply to every action that we take, even if it is a planning action. So, yeah, uh, you know, I love this. Yeah. So, you know, the, I'm sorry, there's yeah. one more thing I wanted to say. When, when you talk about free your mind up here, the thing that occurred to me right away was that if I don't write things down and I'm trying to hold on to it in my memory, what that does for me is fill up that brain space so that I can't let any other good ideas in. So if I put it on a piece of paper, then I don't have to concentrate so hard on remembering something. And, and you know, let's face it, as I get older, it's really harder to, to remember all that stuff. <laughs> well, and, and a great example of that, and, and you've seen me use it. I've used it re uh, religiously. I've been a live scribe pen, the, the mm -hmm. pen that will write. You, you write, it captures everything you write, plus it records the audio and syncs it up perfectly. So my natural nature before I learned about the live scribe several years ago was I was writing lots and lots of notes in notebooks. It's my mm -hmm. it's my nature to, in you know, some people would call it journaling and, and stuff, and I keep very detailed notes, and I always have, and it's in my nature. When I saw this pen, I thought, okay, great. I already work like that, and I can incorporate it in my process very simply. One thing I found, though, is that as I started using it, because I knew I had the audio recording, 
and that it was capturing even what was said, even if I didn't write it down, because before all I had was I relied on my writing. Before I spent a lot of time with my head down writing on my tablet. And even though I didn't necessarily have to, because I had the freedom, knowing that if I had to, I could go back and listen to the recording, I didn't write down quite as much. But mm -hmm. I sure absorbed it and retained it much better. I was able to elevate my attention to what people were saying as compared to being so obsessed with writing down what I might need to remember. You know, that's so interesting because when I was in college, the first, uh, the first time I was in college, I was an avid no-note taker. I would go into the, to the uh, lectures and specific, specifically not take notes because I couldn't, I couldn't concentrate on what they were saying mm -hmm. if I was taking the notes as well. So I really wanted to make sure that I did that. Then I, I got so much information in there that I had to really flip that and figure out how to pick out and, and write down what I was doing. So the writing down part is a learned skill that we have to do, I think. So. Yeah, and I have, uh, I have three, uh, well, I have three uh, kids. My youngest has just started his freshman year at Georgia Tech and uh, a UGA and then a Tech graduate. And the thing I emphasized with them all through school was attend class. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it's it's when you're in college. I mean, it's at high school. You kind of you kind of have to, um, but in college, uh, hey, you're on your own. You decide if you're going to go mm -hmm. and attend class because just the, you know, absorbing it um, is so much better than relying upon uh, somebody else's notes. Mm -hmm. It's just not the same thing. Mm -hmm. So um, let me hit a couple more of these. So soak in the big picture, um, and the whole idea with that one is keep it visible. Um, uh, and I have, uh, in my office, I have a large whiteboard. Uh, who would have thought in the nature right. of what I do with facilitation? Um, but I have a large whiteboard, and what I've got into a process of doing now recently is uh, keeping a top three list. And then, you know, if it's a top three that I've got to get done today, it's highly visible. I mean, I can't move around the office without seeing it. Um, or it's a, a top three, you know, of objectives for this week, this month. Um, but visibility, I've even heard um, in terms of people that are on maybe a weight loss program, is every morning they will write their the weight when they weighed in on their mirror in the mm -hmm. bathroom, right? It's visible. And so having it written down and visible is very important. And so we're hitting on things like, okay, the basic process of listing out your task is one thing. But what we're getting into and what we're really what I'm really talking about is the mental process that goes behind it. Right. And that's what makes you productive. Anybody can write something down on a post-it. And then if you don't even know where the post-it is, it didn't help you. It's right. the mental process of keeping those things in front of you, of, of understanding and clearing things out. And even that last one on the lower right-hand side that says make the yes in your head louder is um, I have a real process for making sure that my desk is cleared off, that things are ready for the next time when I come back as compared to coming into a cluttered area um, because that way I get right to work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know what's in front of me. I work on, tried to, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, again, it's the, the artist side of the Overwhelm Escape Artist, mm -hmm. but I try to have one thing on my desk. Um, and writers, they'll use, uh, I don't know if I'll pronounce it right, but Scavenger or... Uh, Scrivener. Uh, Scrivener, thank you. Yep. Um, and the whole the reason why that's taken off is it actually shows you less options. It's it's a cleaner screen because you can focus. Mm -hmm. um, how novel in this uh, in this age of fast uh, immediate response, uh, everything is right in front of you, um, uh, world. Yep. Uh, but th I, that's the first thing is and so the um, sometimes you might you might just write down a, a large you might just kind of do a brain dump and I've done this too I've I've done it with mind maps I've done it with just writing it down or typing it out is okay I gotta get everything off my mind I gotta in essence clear my mind of all the lists now I may not act on each of these things but if I can get them all down I at least know what's in front of me and and that's great let's let's move on to the next piece of that though and that is being able to next Assign a time for mm -hmm. each of these tasks, um, and this you know, this gets back a little bit in terms of the project manager side of me. Is hey, a whole plan's great, but it means nothing if you don't know when you're going to get done. But even more than that, think about this as a single task, a single item that you're going. You know, let's say I've got you know three things I want to get done today. Um, okay, am I going to get done with those by 3 p.m., 6 p.m.? You know, 
1 a.m. in the morning that, that night? Um, I probably have some idea. Um, you got to be able to assign your plan time to each of these tasks. And I'm going to talk more about that. Um, but really what it is is, um, think about the, the one on the right-hand side there. Adopt a winning strategy, right? Um, if you can quantify and manage even these five and ten minute steps or times in your life, um, you know, four 15 minute blocks saved is an hour more in your day. Um, I, I work uh, from, uh, on the corporate side of what I do, I, I work with a very large company that has a very large um, uh, work uh, staff mm -hmm. that uh, does a lot of manual work. And when that manual work is reduced by half a second, individually doesn't mean much, but when you spread it across the whole operation, it's a huge savings. Um, so again, uh, put a, put a time to it. It's kind of in my in my nature. Well, what's the what's the saying? You know that um, uh, goals without deadlines are are wishes. Wishes. There you go. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's what you're talking about here. That's it. And the other thing about the, putting a time to it, and I noticed this when I started using the Action Machine years ago, um, was that when I set aside two times a day for 15 minutes each to go check my email, I didn't waste the rest of my day thinking about when am I going to check my email. That's it. Yeah, and it's part of that. You know, even think about it's a template. It's a, and even the harnessing your online monster, right? Is mm -hmm. um, if you know you're going to check your emails and you get in that habit of doing it consistently for 15 minutes twice a day, it doesn't. It stops bugging you that you haven't checked your email because right. hey, I'm going to get to it. I have during my scheduled time. It actually makes right. you feel better that you're not constantly. Uh, a slave to the email monster, so to speak. Now, when you're building out your plan, though, for really important tasks for a project, and, and we're talking here about actual project execution, um, when you're building out your plan, you're identifying all your tasks, and the way I like to do it, I don't know about you, Gary, but the way I like to do it is go to the end and start working backwards. For this to get done, what has to happen? For that to get done, what has to happen? And you start dry, and did drilling into all of those tasks, you write all those tasks down, and then you end up with um, uh, you end up with a bunch of tasks that you have to sequence and prioritize and then you assign deadlines to those tasks or times uh, to those tasks and then when you get that times uh, assigned you can actually figure out how long this thing's going to take you right yeah yeah and so and and think of it in this way in terms of um, it, in, in your example is a very broad it could be a very large project plan and you've got to kind of roll those times up Mm -hmm. um, and but ultimately, you don't know what beginning and end is unless you know what those times are. Mm -hmm. Think about it now for your day. So instead of thinking about I've got this large project that I need to work on, think about for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to work. How many hours are you planned to work? And how are you going to utilize all that time to its fullest? Put a put a timed plan together. Mm -hmm. um, cause here's the here's the, here's the important extra question I had I had uh, written down about time. Um, if you have a task and I assign, I'm going to work on planning out my next product launch for the next 30 minutes. Uh, let's say 90 because I over plan all the time. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, and I set a timer and I work on it and I hit and the timer goes off at 90 minutes. So here's the question. I'm almost done but I didn't quite finish my planning. What do I do? What's the average person do? What's the typical? What's the? What's our usual response to do that? Continue working on it. I, I, I'm I, that. I'm that close. Mm -hmm. Let me keep going. I, hey, if I can just put another, maybe it's another ten, but then it actually ends up being twenty or thirty minutes. Here's here's my suggestion to everybody. Okay, stop. Mm -hmm. You gave yourself ninety minutes to do it. Stop and go to the next task. You're going to have to come back and finish it. I'm not saying leave stuff undone. But the more times that you force yourself to stop, you're training your brain to say, "Are you serious? <laughs> well, you really meant 90 minutes? Because nobody ever really knows the <laughs> time they put on those things. Come on!" Yeah, yeah. And the brain will then make sure that you start keeping time better. Um, it's amazing.
uh, give your give your brain a chance to do what it's good at. Um, it, it, your brain keeps perfect time. I, I've been. <laughs> yeah, we'll get off. Well, I'm not going to go down the, the the time rabbit hole <laughs> with with it too much farther. But ultimately, set a time. So, how do you set a time? Right. If you're if you're if you've got a task. If this is a daily routine um, and you're managing your weeks or your days tasks, and these are, hey, I know I need to allocate 15 minutes, and I can in 15 minutes I can clear my emails. You know, oh. or some, maybe it's whatever it is. So you have experience. How do you put a time to something? Well, for that way, you have experience doing it, and so you put an estimate. How do you put a time on something that you've never done before? Well, you have to estimate, and you might go off of somebody else's experience. Hey, setting up this web page in this way will typically take you, once you're really good at it, about an hour, but for the first time, it might take you about an hour or 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. You have an estimate, and you work. As you get more skilled and experienced, you'll do it. Um, does it take an experienced mechanic to change the oil in a car the same amount as somebody that has never changed the oil in a car? So here's another trick about time and productivity is the better you get at doing it, the faster and the more effective you are. Mm -hmm. So practice again that mental power of staying focused on one thing and get really good at it as you're doing it. And even if that means I'm going to be really good at it for the next 30 minutes. So I just realized something too that I've gotten away from the time thing and the consistency piece of this because that is where the gold is, is when you add consistency and time management together, yeah. you can get so much more done that is focused on the task, and I call them the money task, right? They're yeah. so much focused on the task. So I've done something in the last year that has really made a difference, and that is block off 9 to 11 in the morning for my build my business time. But what I also realized that is if I don't fill the, that two hours up with the stuff that has to get done, I can veer off quickly. So it goes back to the, to the task management as well as the time assignment. I have a book that I want to get written by March. Um, I'm not going to get it published by March, but I want to have it written by March. And so, you know, I'm, I'm getting nowhere with this. If I take, if I take 30 minutes of that, of that 9 to 11 time in the morning and say this is my writing time, and I'm using Scrivener, by the way, just mm -hmm. like you said. If I use that as my writing time and just schedule it, every day I hit that, I could pick right up where I left off, and pretty soon that book's going to be done. Yeah. So it is the consistency and the structure that makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. It, everybody can be a great time manager for half a day. Mm -hmm. Right? Anybody can. But, again, if time, if, you, if the productivity of your time is the equal ultimate equalizer because everybody has the same amount. The people that are highly effective are the ones that consistently manage their time well. Not, I got real, I, hey, I was really good at time management yesterday. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been wasting my time on email all day today, but uh, yesterday I was really good. Doesn't That's not going to cut it. Um, I'm going to move on, but and we may have some more um, some more thoughts in terms of uh, from the time. But it, it's this is a third step again. I, I mentioned before I like three, um, and it fits well real well. But it is this simple: is if you know what you're going to do and you know how long it's going to take, you mm -hmm. know you really need to. In the lower right hand side, it's it's what we've been talking about: is you have got to focus, and and that's where my, the comment I was just I was just making is be the very best on that task in front of you. For whatever that you know, for the next 30 minutes. If this is a task for 30 minutes, you be the very best at doing that task at least for the next 30 minutes and focus on it. Um, stay distraction free. Um, so the more things that you can turn off, eliminate, you know, silence the phones, uh, have one screen up of work in front of you. Yeah, uh, I mean, literally right now, although I don't have all of them up, you know, I have five screens in front of me, and that's only because I shut two down because we're on a webinar. So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I mean, it's, it's an art. Uh, that's why I'm an artist, but um, stay focused. Uh, I do actually only have two screens up, one for the slides and one for, one for David because I do have to keep an eye on him. Um, that's right. <laughs> so, which gets to one of the bullets that I have on there is remember to have fun, right? I, I'm, you know, I, I, I joke around and I, you know, I, I'll say some sarcastic things and things like that and I've actually I've learned recently how sarcastic I really am and I didn't realize I was so sarcastic. Um, but have some fun with it and if, if what you feel 
because uh, I've I've talked with several. Uh, you know, I have I I one on one coach with folks at a very it's a very steep price. I take on very few clients um, uh, uh, when I when I can, uh, and um, but when I do uh, talk with folks, they get real. Some people have a real negative perception about lists and time management. It's like I don't I don't like doing that. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's well, you just haven't had enough fun doing it. Um, as a facilitator of projects, I, I tell people all the time one of the greatest things I enjoy doing is checking the box. I'll put a I'll put a post I'll put a big foot chart up on the wall with three objectives. And when we get one of those first objectives done in a in a meeting with a group, I'll run over to that flip chart and, and say, Are did we I'll first I'll clarify, did we get this objective done? They'll go, Yes, I go, Great, because I love checking this box. Boom. You know, the, the the first consulting, well, not the first, but the consulting the company that I worked with, that I loved working with, we started the day with what was called a daily doneness matrix. And it was to go back through the list on the big board of, of tasks that were to be accomplished yesterday. And we would go through and say, check, 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 check. And, you know, when you start your day that way, it is. It gives you just an incredible sense of accomplishment and a lot of fuel for moving forward. Yeah, and you know, you even think about um, you know the aspect of maybe a um, a gratitude, mm -hmm. um, you know, and just starting out your day, understanding, and that's even let's let's talk about. I think um, it's one of these uh, here that might be uh, not be on the screen right now, but one of the things is how about planning tomorrow's day today, right? Yeah. So um, if you are able to, uh, what did I get done today? I got I got these three four things done. And tomorrow, I'm going to get the next five things done here. Mm -hmm. Just imagine how you feel wrapping up your day, one, seeing the accomplishments you did, and two, I know what I'm going to do next. And I know, David, you and I are both huge fans on letting our mind work on stuff overnight. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I will. I will. You know, I, I know I should stay up and and really work through this problem or figure out this answer. And I'll say, nope. I will. I won't. I'm not going to stay up an extra hour. I'm going to go to bed now and get up an extra hour early. And I'm, I'm ten times more chance of having it solved. Mm -hmm. I did exactly that last night. I put a new video up on the sales page this morning. And I thought I could do this tonight and have it done, but it'll be up until like one o'clock. And I thought, no, I think I'll go to bed, get up fresh, do it. And it went. I got the video, the sales page, all completed in like 20 minutes this morning. So yeah, it was great. I think that's key. Um, so I'm gonna go to. Let me go to this next page. It's, and it's just kind of summarizing. But I got a couple other you know thoughts to think about as you as you look at um, in terms of these three steps your list your time and then and take the action you know, a couple other questions that come to mind and 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 students or coaching clients that I've worked with or just me in 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 general so like when I'm putting a list together like how detailed does my task list need to be like the action items that I list out are they are they how do I know when I've listed it to the right level um, and the way I usually will help answer that is you need to know the task well enough so that you can immediately start working on it. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're pretty, if you're, if you're not clear on uh, what the task, so if the task is uh, create a sales page, but you have not done it very many times or not all at all yet, and you ha you're not even sure of all the components of a sales page and the sequence they goes in, they go in, and and how to set it up, you might have a you might, ooh, well, actually, I want to research good sales right. page process. Well, that's your first. That's that was the first step. Then that not create the sales page was the first step. So you have to have enough clarity. You put enough detail in so you have clarity to know what is your very next step, not necessarily, you know, at the high level. Does the mechanic have a one line item that says change oil? Yeah, the mechanic has done that numerous times, and they have already built into their checklist how they do it. Uh, speaking of checklist, does an airplane pilot have a checklist for before they take off? How Absolutely. many hours are they flying? I, I, did they forget this from one 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 trip to the next? No, it's meant to be a checklist to help them be more efficient. And by gosh, hit every one of those and not get uh, lazy or complacent that yeah I've kind of checked it. Did I check it or not? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some pretty smart people that come up with those things for reasons we need to leverage those 
Um, and then I'll just uh, one more, one more question I'll end with um, is which task on your list is the very is the most important? If you have something on your list, how do you know which one is the most important task? Hmm. Good question. And it's a trick question. <laughs> okay. So, there's two there's two ways to answer that. Um, one would be is there's a whole nother process and you know there's a whole nother webinar we could do about prioritization of your ultimate projects. Mm -hmm. So my view is I, I don't think you really prioritize task to speak of from a project standpoint. You manage the sequence of those tasks in the most efficient way, but you don't necessarily prioritize them. But you pro you prioritize the projects you're going to work on. But really what I was getting to is, well, which task on your list right now is the most important? It's the very next one you're going to work on. Yeah, I was going to say dependency. You need to figure out your dependency. That's the old um, uh, project manager in me. Yeah. That we would look at dependency and see what has to be done for the next task to actually be completed. So yeah. you know, it is the next task. It's the next right thing. Yeah, and both of those are the right answer. But again, in putting it in context, what I would say is your most important task is the very next one you must do. Yep. Um, and that's the simple answer to it. Now, you deciding which one is the next one, you should have already have done that as you put your list together. But if you are spending, I, I almost said wasting time, if you are spending time mm -hmm. deciding, okay, which one am I going to do next, mm -hmm. every one of those minutes are lost. Don't. Take the next one and do it. Even if it ended up should have been the number two or three today, you got it done, good, go on. Yep. So pick the very next one and just go. Uh, it's kind of the idea is if I had a, if I was going to walk along the Great Wall of China, do I have to see the whole Great Wall before I will first take one step on it? Well, one, I can't, and two, I don't need to. I just know that it keeps on going, so I got to just take the first step. Okay. So those are the three basic steps. There's there can be more to it, but that's it um, in terms of how we can be more efficient. Um, and 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 David had mentioned um, the action machine. This is um, I I almost I was almost going to put up a I think it's a Remington. They, what a, I can't even remember the guy's name, but there used to be an old commercial where the guy holds up a Remington razor and said, "I was a customer and I loved it so much I bought the company." Right? Yeah, I remember that. That was me. That is me, right? Uh, it's part of my business model. It's part of what I do. Is I uh, I do buy businesses and I do buy um, products. And I have been using action, the Action Machine for quite a while. I actually already own resale rights. I own a private label version of it also. Um, but when the original creator, who is really more focused on the uh, on the design of it and has done a, a fabulous job. Um, was interested in selling it off. I made a, I made a, you know, we pushed for a deal that really kind of made sense for both of us because this is what I'm about. I love this so much that mm -hmm. I, you know, it made sense for me to have it and own it as a product that I can then help advance and take it forward. Uh, so the Action Machine, um, you may or may not, folks may uh, may have seen a couple different versions. They may get labeled a little different because there are some um, private label versions and some resale versions out there. Um, there's only now one place, uh, and that's one of the things in terms of taking over business, and again, another future webinar, is understanding some of the ways of not confusing the market. Um, so a little bit of that confusion uh, can be out there. But in general, um, the actionmachine.com is the only place to get the, the full version, and ultimately the one differentiator across all the different products is um, if you do, if you are a customer of and and purchase product through there. You have lifetime upgrades, mm -hmm. um, and and that's the only place. And and frankly, I and that was a commitment I made uh, to all the past customers. Of the Action Machine, even as I as I purchased it, is um, they are all continue to get uh, upgrades to the next version as we as we move forward. Glad to hear it because I own it. I know, and I know, and I remember uh, a, a, a few years back. Um, where you had said, "Hey, you could buy this as a you know another version, but I like to sell the original because it's uh, you can get the uh, you can get full upgrades." That's exactly what I told people because I actually purchased from somebody else who had a white label version, but you couldn't get the upgrades. So I went to, straight to the uh, website and bought the original version because I love getting the latest version of stuff. Yep, yep. So uh, I want to give you a couple options for folks. Um, at uh, our, you know, seeing this or seeing the, the replay of it. And so the first one is, and again, in terms of um, helping to 
bring some stability to the to the particular market about the action machine. One of the things I've done is I've kind of locked in the pricing on that, and so I really don't offer any more a discounted pricing of the action machine. Um, it just gets confused. It's I mean it sells every day. I, I'm mm -hmm. getting sales on this every day at 47. It is there. Yeah, it, there's a time to change a price if it's an, if it's an incorrect price, but it's proven itself um, out as a, as a good price. So that's one of the options. And we'll have a side up at uh, uh, a special side up for David's group for NAMS that you'll be able to get the, a full view of the of the different options on the product. Uh, typically, this the regular site is a a site that goes to uh, as a click bank and we're setting up a special sales page uh, for David that'll be up soon but the new the one thing extra that uh, we're, we're uh, we've put together and this is all also again some of the coaching that I just got uh, worked through with David on the 90 uh, day up level is there is a lot of folks out there that I can't get to I do right. I do some you know I do a, a pretty you know exclusive one-on-one -on -one coaching but the opportunity to take and work with a group of folks um, makes it you know uh, possible for me to be able to work with a bunch of folks and help them and that, and I and I'd love to do it um, so we said I've set up a what I would call an elite action uh, coaching and it's it's not just um, more about and helping folks through some of the questions they may have about uh, setting up a good routine, getting into a habit of time management, how effectively to use uh, the action machine. And if you do choose to go with the Elite Action Coaching, uh, you will get, if you don't already have it, a, um, uh, including a copy of the action machine so you can use it because I think it is an important tool. Um, so I want to say something about uh, when we were going through uh, the coaching that we did in the 90-day up-level challenge, yeah. um, 90-day challenge up-level, uh, about about this because you had at that point just purchased the Action Machine product in the few weeks or month before um, starting that, and one of the things that I was so excited about was that you were going to be in a position to actually start doing coaching with other people about this because you're such a great project management professional. You're somebody who knows how to get things done. And this was, I was really excited because this is a natural entree for you into working with as many people as possible to help them be successful. You know and I know that when you go behind the curtain on people who are successful in their businesses, it's because they get stuff done. Whether they do it themselves or whether they delegate it, which is part of your actions that have to be done. Mm -hmm. um, all of that needs to be done. And you are the guy who does this better than anybody. So I'm really excited that you are um, making this an opportunity for people to learn from you. Um, and that was just a natural when we were talking. Yeah. yeah so I'm, I'm really well, and, and again, those are things that I had not necessarily um, thought that we would move. I would move this way in terms of the coaching program. And all you needed to do is, from a coaching standpoint, you were my coach mm -hmm. at that time, was being able to open up and, and look at it from another perspective. Sure. And frankly, uh, I, and again, I'm, I've been to every NAMS. And one of the things I love about NAMS is being able to work with a lot of people. Right. And this will give us a chance to be able to do more of that. Um, and and the other advantage of it being in terms of a coaching program um, is it, let me just kind of give you a quick idea and um, and we'll have a we'll have a website up that you'll be able to work through some of the details of it and, and it'll uh, give you but here's a kind of a snapshot of it, and why I want to do it I want to make sure this is done the right way um, and and it is not just uh, time management it really is. And I, and I kind of laid this out as we're going to do clean up, we're going to do clear out, and then we're going to rock and roll. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if you think about right now where we're at, we're coming up towards the end of the year, and there's a lot of things that we need to kind of clean up. We, we've got this last push that we need to make to really close out 2014, and that's what we're going to focus on. And each, so what this is, is four different weeks. Um, but it's really eight sessions. The first session, which is a training session, will be a, a training module that I'll have recorded. I'll do a webinar and post that out. And then we'll follow up later that week with a, Q, a live Q&A session to where folks can have time to absorb and use it and then be able to engage and, and we'll be able to have a live Q&A about that particular topic. And the first one is that first week is what do I need to do to get cleaned up and, and, and really be wrapping up 2014. Mm -hmm. And then it rolls into January, and now we're into the first full week of January, and our focus is on clear it out. Great. 
you got some things or you might not have got everything done you wanted to get in 2014, fine. What do we got to do to clear that out so that you can really focus on 2015 you know, and looking forward? So we're going to work on you know, specific techniques and specific objectives and even you know, in terms of a little bit of accountability aspect of let's get these things cleared out of our way. And that sets us up to rock and roll into 2015. And so we are putting our plan together by, by January. We're rocking and things are moving. But I don't want to, I don't, I want to carry us through to February because there you have an opportunity to continue to have momentum and roll forward through your year. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more important for me, and again, and, and David knows from you know from us, you know, working even on the the business model um, uh, training and stuff. I, I, I my caring about making sure that this matters and helps people move forward. Um, it really made sense that it was over over this period of time. So I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to it. I'm I'm excited about it and uh, looking forward to uh, being able to help folks get through and really get momentum going into the next into the next year. Now, will you have a, a private Facebook group for these folks as well, where they can carry on conversation about their any questions or any kind of additional peer-to-peer -peer stuff as well? Yeah, we're going to have um, something like that. Um, at 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 a minimum, it will be something like a private Facebook group that will be by default that will happen. Um, the potential may be is that um, this works into we might do it again and again mm -hmm. and again. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to kind of work through. You know how the different groups may be able to work together and sure. interact, sure. but at a minimum, it'll be something like a private Facebook group included as well, because that's it's not just the one training time and the Q and A time, but it's also learning and and doing things even between those. Um, because again, time management is not about oh, I'm going to work really hard on it for a week and then I got to kind of forget about it the week in between. It, it mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. so. So Gary uh, had told me that the coaching website is not really up yet, and when he tells me that that is up, which he said would be in a few hours, uh, what I'll end up doing is sending out an email to folks and let them know that this is available. It'll be with a replay, and they'll be able to see this and actually get to those links as well at that point. And that's what we'll do. So Gary, um, what do you? Anything else you want to say about um, this process and the action machine and your three-step process as you, before we leave? Well, I think the big thing is, and again, um, uh, hopefully everybody has really got the I, the the perspective is that I, I'm I'm not hooked that you need to use the action machine. Mm -hmm. What I am hooked is you need a process and a system. If the action mm -hmm. machine is what helps you, perfect, love it. Would love to do it, but it doesn't have to be. Um, a kitchen timer that has a buzzer on it and you set it for 30 minutes. Do it. That's what matters. Um, and the actual machine works in Mac and PC, though, right? Yeah, it has a it has a both a PC and a Mac version. Okay. Um, and so yes, you have you have the ability to use it on both. Um, and a uh, hint towards future versions as we're working towards interoperability because right now it, it's you can't really share them between the two of them. Um, so we'll probably be going more to an, uh, an air platform and something like that where it's the same program, but right. down the road. So the main thing is do the f take action and do those steps, set a time and take it. If the tools will help you, great. If I can be of service to help you from a coaching standpoint, wonderful. Uh, I'm going to make sure you get 10 times more out of it um, than, uh, than what you expect, but ultimately I'm okay. It's, it's just use these three steps and you'll and you'll be better off okay great well thank you so much for doing this today because this is I, I think this is we talk about foundational things often in our um, workshop and in our training that we do this is one of the foundational things that has to be um, conquered because if you don't conquer your time management and your ability to create um, actionable plans and take action on those plans yeah. Then you're not going to succeed, no matter what you do. That's it. So um, this is very important. You'll be teaching this at NAMS. You'll be teaching this everywhere we can get you. And I really appreciate you doing this, Gary. So thank you so much for jumping in here with it. And I'll be talking to you about the uh, Mac version since I just moved over to Mac as well. So I need to get that Mac version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, well. Okay. If you got to go Mac, okay. <laughs> I went Mac. So sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. We got you taken care of. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Talk to you All soon. Right. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. <laughs>